Hi, this is Sandy with SDS Digital, and this video is for mode 0 to 4 of the new Delay Effects Distortion Alternate Firmware for the SDS VCO. Getting right into it, the modular level audio is fed into the mod jack, and the modified audio output will exit at the usual out jack. Most of the modes use a CV input for various functions and offsets to knob values depending on the mode. The trigger gate input is used for muting, sync, or delay freeze in a couple of modes. The wave knob selects the mode from 0 to 15, indicated by the LEDs. The release knob adjusts mostly feedback or level parameters. The decay knob adjusts primarily the sample rate in most modes, while the attack knob can control the buffer size, distortion level, phase, or bit count, so it changes quite a lot with each mode. I have a GM MIDI drum loop playing for the audio input, which I'll patch into the mod jack. First we'll try out mode 0, which is a lo-fi 3-tap delay. Each tap position is controlled on one of the top three knobs. Taps can be close together to introduce a phasing effect into the delay, or spaced apart to thicken the sound or create a flam effect on the percussion, or both. The original audio is not mixed with the delay's output, so this is a great way to turn mono into stereo. I'll patch the original mono signal to one side, while leaving the SDS VCO inserted on the other. Adjusting the delay tap, you can hear alignment, then phase, and delay time from one side to the other. It's not too bad for an 8-bit delay, eh? The mix is 12-bit, though, which improves the overall quality from three different sources internally. Now back to mono. The max delay time is less than one quarter second but can be stretched by lowering the sample rate with the CV input. By controlling the sample rate with a step CV input, standard delay shift effects can be realized. A gate input or longer pulse can be used to pause the delay. This occurs once patched into the TG input and the gate is low. In other words, the gate must be high when patched for normal delay operation. Let's add some flair to mode zero, don't you think?
Mode 1 is a simple phase delay. This means the width is fairly small, but covers the angle in audio range right down to lower frequencies like kicks or bass. The attack knob controls the phase that is mixed with the original internally. To the point of nulling. The decay knob sets the sample rate so the phase delay becomes more apparent. The CV input will offset both the sample rate on the decay knob and the shift. This makes it more versatile as the decay knob can be adjusted to remove the sample rate offset. I'll set it to mid-range so the CV offset can be heard. The RITEM is outputting a variable CV created earlier from knob moves. You can hear how it plays with both the phase and the sample rate. The TG input when used softly gates the audio output so it can be used to mix effects with non-effects further down in your chain. This is of course all out of sync with the MIDI drums, but you get the idea. The release knob does nothing at this time, but may in a future revision. So there's mode 1. Mode 2, aka freeze gate, is a cool effect that will freeze incoming audio when the TG input is high. Because when nothing is plugged into the TG, it defaults to high, the buffer will already be frozen with whatever was last in it. When low, the audio passes through with a slight delay. The delay size depends on the buffer size set by the attack knob. The buffer size is important as lower frequencies may require a larger buffer size to stitch smoothly. Each gate pulse pauses the audio where it is in the buffer and then loops it so the transition is pretty seamless. The decay knob controls the sample rate as usual, but the CV input offsets it upwards even further so frozen notes can be played. I'll show you that in a minute. The release knob adjusts the level of the mix of the incoming audio. For example, if turned down, only freezes are heard. If turned up, both the incoming audio plus the freezes is heard. Changing the buffer size and finding a good sample rate on the decay knob gives capability to play frozen notes as mentioned earlier. CV input can offset the decay so acts as one volt per octave. Again, it would be better if things were more synchronized, but you get the picture. What would an effects firmware be without a car plus strong delay? Decay controls the sample rate while attack controls the buffer size as usual. Oops, 
should unplug this. Release knob sets the feedback level from 0% to 100%. It has quite a ring to it, depending on the frequency, and can be overdriven to distortion without clipping artifacts. The CV input offsets the decay knob sample rate at 1 volt draw tip, so it's suitable for hammering out a melody. I'll use the RITM for the CV source. Select minor scale and offset. I'm matching the MIDI drum's tempo on the RITM even though it's not being synced. It'll do for the example. The buffer size can be changed also, which in turn shifts the car plus frequency. Most people with any number of modulars, I think, have done this at one point or another, but that doesn't make it any less cool. I was surprised at the sound quality this mode gives. The CV offset range increases with slower sample rate and adds some retro grunge to the mix. I could play with this all day, but better move on to the fourth mode of 15. This is the last mode in this video, and the other 10 modes are covered in following videos. Mode 4 is a simple pitch doubler. This is especially good for vocal samples, but works with anything pretty much equally well. I'll use a Doug Stano podcast as an example, and because it's just the right thing to do. Here's the original audio feed, and with the pitch doubler. Thanks a lot. The attack knob controls buffer size, but clockwise tightens the buffer as opposed to other modes. If set too small, the lower frequency audio becomes clipped due to the laws of frequency versus buffer size and sample rate. I think it just adds another modifier to play with. Slowing the sample rate can give interesting results, as the record head and play head are always at a 2 to 1 ratio, but time plays a factor. The pitch appears to be changing with the smaller buffer size, but it isn't really. It's the algorithm trying to soften the edges by inserting intermediate waveforms. Again, it's a cool sound, so I'll leave it be. The CV input offsets the sample rate in pitch doubler mode, so you can add some subtle changes to a constant stream. Well, that's it for modes 0 to 4. Stay tuned for modes 5 to 15 coming soon. If you want to try the firmware on your SDS VCO, just follow the link and don't forget to subscribe. I'm Sandy Sims. Keep on patching!